watching the most unique automotive channel on YouTube, The Hoosier Garage. Well, what we have here is a parts car. No, it's not a duster, obviously. It is a dark swinger with no doors. 1975 model. And you might be thinking, if you're not real familiar with this stuff, well, what good is this car going to do you for your duster? Well, it is an A-body. That's the Chrysler platform that the duster was built on. So pretty much the internal chassis of this car is interchangeable with the duster. So the rocker panels, the floor pans up here, pretty much from about here forward. Uh, the inner frame rails, the, the skirting, the radiator support, even part of the cowl, not all of it, but part of the cowl is interchangeable with the duster. Things like the dash, the hinges, actually the door jam here and maybe even part of the rear frame system on on these might be interchangeable now a lot of the door panels interchange you know the doors themselves actually interchange now these 75s did not have a wing window in them so they'll interchange more immediately to a duster it's just you have to change the glass out because they have the, the the squared off glass where the duster is curved okay if it had the wing window on earlier ones, you could still take that out. It would The shell itself would interchange. And obviously, if you have a Dart Sport or a four-door Dart, the fenders, hood, all this front end here, even the bumper that would be missing, is interchangeable. Now, I don't have a Dart right now to interchange with, so a lot of these parts, hood's in okay shape. It's got a couple pinholes in it right there. There's a little hole here, a couple things, but the other side's really good good shape. The header panel. So we'll probably put that away unless somebody really needs it. But the main reason I bought this car is if you look underneath here, 73 and up models have a big bolt pattern, like the big B bodies and E bodies, C bodies even. You've got disc brakes, okay? And you've got a K frame with the spool mount motor mount situation on it um, in my opinion a much more superior design over the the rubber biscuit mounts which are kind of fused together that could fail you know if you don't keep track of them obviously but it's just a little more secure situation um, the disc brakes are better than the earlier disc brakes is there a single piston the other ones were like a four piston I think plus they're just really rare to find 72 and back disc brakes the 73 through 76 very common in most of these cars not all of them had them if you had a car that was a drum brake car in one of these 73 through 76 you'd have a small bolt pattern there's a lot of uh misinformation saying well just because it got to 73 everything went bolt, big bolt pattern not true they kept the small bolt pattern if it was not a disc brake car another little thing that i, I kind of like to have it isn't an option just because you get disc brakes isn't an option but it's a it's a different option i guess you could say it's not you know inclusive with the disc brakes now if you look here they got a big socket in there well right below that socket would be a sway bar mount on some cars well that one doesn't have it but i noticed this one does so there's been some work on this car i don't know uh it kind of looks like that's the only part that would uh would lead me to think that it's had it but it doesn't have the brackets or anything for the sway bar the sway bar itself is gone um so i'm not sure about that but if anything we could use that as a template to modify the ones we got i do have the template for the exact mount but the location is a little iffy so that will provide the proper location so ultimately we can switch this front suspension over to the 72 duster have a little bit more modernized type set up with the brakes the big bolt pattern you get a, a wider variety of wheels have a couple uh i guess you could say safety features in the, the motor mount situation itself plus the brakes are just real they're really good brakes i mean a lot of people oh my brakes don't you know they're not that good in one of these but really they they are good if you keep them uh maintenance keep everything squared up on them get new parts when you need them they're very good brakes because these aren't really heavy cars and they're pretty big brakes for the size and I think uh, they hold up to today's, I guess, comparisons to other cars.
Uh, a couple other little things we'll look at here. It does have an interior hood release. Now the knob is uh, kind of messed up, but it's all uh, fixable. We'll just lay that here. And let's get into the hood here. Remember that? Okay, and we'll get into some other stuff here, so stay tuned for that. But if we go under the hood, still have an engine in here and is not a slant six it is a 318 v8 and that is original to this car i don't know if this particular one is but the uh, one two three four fifth digit on the vin is a g that means it's a 318 plus you can also look at this if it's original it looks like it's original engine 318 the la family okay so this one has had some stuff done to it one it has a four bell carburetor, which was not stock in these. And it has an old style, kind of what the Edelbrock Performer is now. Uh, the Carter a AFB Competition Series. Not sure about CFM. I'm guessing if they did things right, it's probably a 600 or 650, somewhere in there. It's got some Moroso uh, wire looms, uh, Moroso wires in some places, but then, you know, some other ones. So it's kind of mishmash on that. Um, we have power steering. It's cool. Um, somebody did have headers on it here, but obviously they did not want them on there for whatever reason. So they have been sawed off. So I guess if you need a header flange, you have that. Anyways, uh, if you look at the valve covers, they're obviously not stock and they're a little hard to tell what they say, but they are Urson, as in Sig Urson, and uh, E-R-S-O-N right here. So these might be something worth you know, uh, de-rusting and maybe painting or having them re chromed or something. Yeah, it looks like we have a Mr. Gasket breather on there and just a mishmash of stuff. It's not the ideal situation that you'd want. If he's looking for a driver, you have wiring, you have some of this stuff going on here. You got your master blasters type XL coil, whatever. Uh, you have the voltage regulator with the goo coming out of it and you have all these electric, uh, electrical additions to 75s that weren't everybody's favorite things, but Got a good coolant bottle if you wanted to go to the 73 pluses. Have a big 26 inch radiator and accompanying fan shroud, although it does not have the clutch style fan. It's got like one of the, I don't know, vicious style, kind of the plastic fans. Interesting little bit there. And uh, I'm thinking this 318, if it all checks out in time, we'll probably go to Mofo Driver and possibly to his 66 dart that he has a slant six in right now but we're going to worry about his slant six first before we go dealing with any of this so we'll just tuck this one away and it's got a 904 transmission in there they don't have the kick down hooked up don't know how long they ran it without it hopefully not long because that tends to burn out the clutches in these things so don't do that folks and we got electronic ignition so the distributor regulator stuff like this all would be along for a electronic ignition set setup yeah. we have a three-speed wiper most of these had the little can that stuck out but this is a three-speed with this style here so uh, the van that we have does not have any working wipers on them right now it has a, a two-speed that isn't working so we might see if this one will work and then we'll have a three-speed and get the according switch to it maybe it'll work out so we'll see stuff like this here your little wiper, see this one's gone or broke, but this one here, the little metal clips that have the nozzles on them that shoot the fluid up on your windshield, that will be of good use for the duster because mine were pretty much missing, okay? Had power brakes, obviously this brakes, but it had the power booster on it. I have that, actually it was laying on the floor and I just put it back together with the master cylinder and the bracketry and put it in the shop for right now so that was included and i also need to take this bracket off and that bracket off because it all goes with it it all helps support it so if you pull a booster out of a junkyard or one of your friend's cars or whatever they're letting you have the power brake booster out of it make sure you take this bracket and that one too it's all part of it, it needs to go with it to help support it and if we go back to the interior now this car is pretty much shot and i'll show you the roof in a minute it's the worst part but i mean the floors aren't much better it's not a saveable car i don't think considering the year even the frame rail lips are gone or it kind of flanges out um there is no 
torsion bar in it. That's why I had that big socket on top of the, the uh, control arm, just helping keep the car from sagging, so to speak. Um, some things I've noted, they've got this on here. I, I would like to use a steering column, although they have boogered up the thread here, probably removing the old wheel. They just messed it up. But uh, if you combine a few of these, you might be able to make one good one with the shafts and all that kind of stuff. But it's got a good turn signal cam and it's a column shift and you can mismatch parts and make it work. We also have the light package. It is missing these little toggles, which it says map light here. But all the harnesses in there, which would include the glove box light and the little courtesy light that is under the dash back in that corner there. I think you have one here too, maybe, I can't remember. I think you should, but uh, either way, we'll get all that out. And we have a pretty good cluster in there, just needs, I guess, redone. Doesn't have any brakes on it. Somebody might be able to use that. They had some extra, like EGR check or something like that. And uh, yeah, check EGR, then your fasten seat belts. Had a couple extra things, but all these lit up. These little, where it says lights and wipers. That will light up. Where earlier models, it was just kind of stamped on there. So uh, the big part of this is the roof. We have little skylights in here. And I guess the story was obviously this is a vinyl top car, the old dark green. And somebody kept a tarp on it and it collected water under it. And then you have this situation here. Not good. But hey, the rest of the car is in pretty rough shape too. But we're going to have a lot of parts here. The only thing really in the trunk, it's a rotted trunk floor and a couple of door panels. And it might be salvageable. Trim panel salvageable. We can maybe sell that. Tail lights look good. We might even have a good gas tank. We obviously have good straps and J-bolts. There's a uh, seven and a quarter in here now. And some makeshift U-bolts just to keep it off the ground. We've got some centerline style wheels. One of them is really janked up over there on that side. They're big bolt wheels, obviously. And I think the only bad part is right here. So if anybody wants some of these wheels, let me know. I'll be glad to let you have them really cheap. But that's what we got basically for our duster. A good parts car to donate a lot of big, heavy parts to, heavy hitter parts, and then we'll just take everything else. You know, I'm all my parts stashed in the back of the shop and we will take every nut and bolt screw that's any worth anything, any little knickknack piece, nickel and dime type stuff. And we will save it and hold on to it so it isn't destroyed so that another Mopar person will be able to use it or heck, I might use it myself. I'd like to thank Kyle over at RT's Mopar Salvage for helping me hook up with this car here. He just got it a while back. He told me about it. I said, hey, bring it on over. I could use all that stuff. And he brought it over today. So make sure you check out RT's Mopar Salvage. Give him a call or uh, actually an email. That'd be probably preferred. And uh, I'll put up the link up here in the corner where we went to his Mopar farm a while back. Make sure you check that out. If there's some parts you need, let him know. A lot of stuff that's lost, but it's uh, you know, salvaging best you can. So give it a look. And now, a classic Indiana car commercial. Hi, I'm Tim Richmond, and this is an original poster of my Indianapolis 500 career created by racing artist Ron Burton. This poster is now available for $5 at your 40 guarantee auto stores throughout Indiana. I hope you will follow my racing progress throughout May as I drive the Guarantee Auto WTTV special in this year's Indianapolis 500, the greatest spectacle in racing. <laughs>